Hi, everybody. Welcome out to the May Pressbooks product update. I'm Steele Wagstaff, the product manager at Pressbooks, and I'm really excited to share with you some of the things that uh, our development team has been working on and that we have released to our users. So the first thing that I want to share has to do with what we all know and love as H5P activities. This was actually an idea that came to us from BC campus, Alan Levine in particular. They've been working on what they call the cooking in the H5P kitchen with Pressbooks. And one of the things they came across was, so here's an example of a Pressbooks chapter that has an H5P activity embedded in it. And then down below, there's another H5P activity. So it's a chapter with multiple H5P activities. These work just fine, but when you produce an export, we're gonna have a little placeholder that says, there was an H5P activity, we can't show you interaction in a PDF, but you can find it at, and then we linked people to the chapter previously. What Alan said would be nice would be, he said, it'd be really nice since instead of just linking me to the chapter, I would love it if you linked me to the specific activity because sometimes there's multiple activities in a chapter and people wanna know which activity. We didn't have the ability to do that until we added a filter with H5P. So um, our developer, Oscar, he wrote a pull request that added this to H5P. They accepted it. They included it in their last release of their plugin. And now we've included what we need to do on the Pressbook side. So if you come into a book and you produce an export of a PDF, what you'll see is something that looks like this. So now if I were to come into that same chapter, you'll notice, uh, let's say that was chapter one, right? You can see there's, it's gonna say an interactive H5P element has excluded. You can view it online here. And you'll notice that instead of just a regular link, there'll be a little hash and this will be the specific ID for that activity. So if I were to come down further, I'm gonna expect this is gonna link me to that Cloudberries assignment within a chapter. It will take you directly to the activity. That's gonna be useful in the, H, the, the um, PDF exports. If a student or someone wants to know exactly what activity that, that they want to be taken to. So that um, uh, will work. Uh, for anything that's been added by short code was JR's question. We're adding the little ID when we process the short code. So um, you can uh, use that as of now, if you're, if you're using one of our hosted Pressbooks networks, if you're using an open source network, you need to update the latest release of Pressbooks and make sure that you have the latest release of the H5P plugin because they require each other for that to work well. So that's kind of a cool feature. We're excited about that. Um, and that helps for people that are reading, you know, offline or online. I saw a question in the chat, which was about the new feature. And the new feature was if you want the new H5P anchor links, yes, you would need to generate a new PDF export of any books that have H5Ps. And that should just happen automatically. Um, another kind of thing that you'll notice is uh, in a book, you can turn on downloads and make file export downloads available to anyone in the world from the book's homepage. When you do that, um, just a quick refresher, if you want to do that, you come into your book, you click on settings and you click sharing and privacy, and you will see an option that says share latest export files. If that is set to yes, then what will happen will be the most recent version of any of the files that you have produced that's available here will be displayed for download on your book's homepage. So here on my book's homepage, you'll see there's a link that says download this book. Here's a book that has a bunch of different download files available. We have cleaned up and clarified some of the labels so that they read a bit more clearly. This says print PDF versus digital PDF so that you know which version is which. We've also renamed the uh, common cartridge exports so that that's a little bit clearer to users. It used to just say web links and people weren't sure what that meant. This is a common cartridge file with web links. And these are various flavors of common cartridge file with LTI links. To, to see the different files that are available here, you just produce a new export or just up, update this on your site and you'll just see that the labeling has changed there for the download files. When I come to export, um, you'll see that the labels have also changed here on the other formats page. They just become a little bit clearer. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Another change that we made was for network managers. If you are a network manager on a Pressbooks network, you have what's called a user list. And this is, we, there's the default WordPress user list that looks a bit like this. So this is what open source users see. For the people that we host with, we provide a, an improved user list with greater sorting and filtering tools. 
And here you'll see, you'll be able to get more information about a user. So I'll say, tell me more about this Steel Wagstaff character. And I'd click info and we'll show you a little capsule of stuff that they've done. And then it shows you a list of all the books that this person's an administrator in, how many revisions they've made, when they last made a revision. So you can get a sense where this person is active. Well, there's some cases where, let's say Steele asked me to change his email address for him. So I could click edit to edit this user. Previously, that edit link took you to their user account at the network root. That was a kind of little bug. And now if you click the edit link here, it will take you to the actual, their kind of expected user profile page for you to be able to make the changes and things that you need. Um, so that's just a small fix, but it's a couple people had noticed and filed it as a bug. So we fixed where this edit link points for the users from that user list available to network managers on a Pressbooks network. So the next thing that I wanna show um, has to do with our LTI plugin. So if you are using Pressbooks LTI 1.3 plugin, you're gonna notice that there's a few features available. Now, this is something that not everybody has on their network. Some networks don't use our LTI 1.3 plugin. Some networks don't have the LTI plugin at all. But, but for people that host with us that are using the LTI 1.3 plugin, you're gonna see a new setting here. And it's gonna say, common cartridge, create export files designed for use with, instead of showing you the LTI version numbers, which was confused, or the common cartridge version numbers, that was confusing to people. What we've done is we provide different versions because actually the different LMSs support them slightly differently. Until they all support them the same way, we need to provide different versions depending on the LMS you're using. So at the network level, you can now decide which version will be the default version for your users. So for example, if you're on a campus that uses Moodle, you might wanna say, okay, let's make the common cartridge exports with LTI links for Moodle. If you're a Canvas campus, you might say Canvas. If you use Blackboard, Detail, or Sakai, you might say this. If you're a consortium that supports all of them, you might say, okay, let everybody have all of them. If you come into an individual book, you'll see that that setting, depending on the network settings, may also be available at the book level. So a book user could override this if you give them permission, or they might just inherit what you've told them they have to have. Then when you come to export, you'll see these different common cartridge export options. Instead of saying 1.3, 1.2, 1.1, we now just tell you which LMS you'd want to use it for. So hopefully that's a bit clearer and easier for people so that they don't have to deal with version confusion and they just say, oh, I'm looking for this LMS. So the, the way that this works, um, is I would say uh, I come into Pressbooks. If the 1.3 plugin is activated and grading is turned on for a chapter, this is that results for LMS feature, you'll see at the bottom of your chapter, so this is a chapter that has a bunch of H5P activities, you'll see this chapter has been configured for grading. And I've added four different H5P activities that total 16 points. They have a start date and end date, a grading scheme, and there will be a Canvas only option. So Canvas supports a, a kind of cool thing with common cartridges that the other LMSs support a little differently. If you want to tell your export that this should be brought in as an assignment in Canvas, not an external link, you would click this button. And then underneath it, you'll see how many points do you want this to be worth in your Canvas gradebook? You can obviously override and change this in the LMS, but it's nice to specify it here because it's auto configuring. So I saw that was 11, 16. I could say 16, or I could say 10, or I could say 32. What Pressbooks will do is they'll calculate a percentage value and send it with this denominator to the LMS. So here I've just configured this particular chapter to be a, an assignment with 16 possible points. So I saved that setting. And now I'm gonna to go to export. And in this case, I wanna use this with Canvas. So I'll click common cartridge with LTI links Canvas. That new file will be available for me here. I'm gonna download it. I would then come into Canvas here and I'm gonna say import course content. Once I pick my common cartridge, I pick the file I just downloaded and I'm gonna say all content. The LMS, different LMSs handle this slightly differently, but in Canvas, 
it finishes, it looks real nice. I've already configured the tool. And now you'll see in modules, one of those chapters I just brought in as not an assignment, but the other three are all assignments in Canvas now. And they have the point values automatically set for me. So a student could come in and launch this. What they would see would be the Pressbooks activity. They would do all the H5P stuff and a grade would show up for them in the gradebook with the value of 16. If I decided I didn't want it to be worth 16, I could change that here in Canvas and I could say, oh, I see. Let's actually make that worth 20 or whatever. So you can still configure it in the LMS, but that Pressbook step just saves you the time and makes it a little bit easier if you're planning to use that as a graded activity with Canvas. Okay, so I just talked for a long spell and showed a bunch of features. I'm gonna pause uh, the screen share and look for questions and take any questions that people might have. Another thing that I won't demo, but that I'll tell you about is just uh, yesterday when we did our deploy, we bumped everybody and upgraded to the latest version of WordPress. And WordPress is now using a newer version of something called jQuery, which is a JavaScript library that handles behavior. We have now updated the jQuery in Pressbooks, in Pressbooks book and in Aldine, some of our themes, so that we're no longer using deprecated jQuery. It should work with the latest versions of WordPress. If you're an open source user and you've bumped WordPress to the latest version and you're noticing some JavaScript problems, it means that you probably also want to upgrade to the latest versions of those Pressbooks plugins and themes so that you get those jQuery fixes that uh, Delcine actually worked on. So thank you, Delcine. Um, okay, so the most exciting thing that I'm really looking forward to sharing is that we have a, the second version of our Pressbooks directory, the new V2 redesigned version of the Pressbooks directory. First of all, I wanna say thank you to everybody who gave us uh, user experience feedback on the first version it was super helpful for helping us make this better and more beautiful. We uh, contracted with the company called Plank Design to do a re redesign rebrand of this that matches our new marketing site. So if you haven't seen it, if you went to pressbooks.com, you would see a similar look and feel. So this is our new pressbooks.com website and the directory has a similar aesthetic here. Some of the big notable features you'll note is now, when you visit the Pressbooks directory, this take the tour button will always be prominently displayed at the top right. When you click take a tour, you'll see a nice little JavaScript overlay that tells you about this Pressbooks directory. And it will take you through the directory and teach you about all the various features. So this will tell you about how to search for books, what it searches and what it does not search. It will show you a sample query and explain what this is searching for. Here's another query that shows you, it's kind of explaining how Boolean operators work on this site. So this will tell you how to use not and 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 those kinds of things or exact searches. Shows you how to perform a search by clicking the button. It'll show you where search results appear. It'll show you how you can change the number of books and the um, way that books are sorted here. And then it will show you how the facet filters work. So you can start to drill down without searching using these facet filters. And this one will show you how you could apply some include filters. It will actually apply three of them and you'll see that your book results change. When you have active filters applied, they will be up here and you can see that they're active here. You can clear, click them, clear them by clicking on them which, or by clicking the clear all button. And so the tour will actually clear them for you. And then it will show you how a book card is set up and what's in there and it will kind of help you understand the book card and the different components of the book card. So the tour is really nice. And at the end of the tour, it points you to the guide chapter or it will just end. So that's there, it's prominently displayed up here. It's also linked from here. You can launch the tour here and you can also find our guide here. So the directory should be a nice kind of self-explanatory tool for most people. It is really powerful. So you'll notice um, we're starting to build out these collections. Those will be coming soon on the actual directory. Once we have the collections, the idea would be Let's say you want to find books about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Well, our, we have a librarian now working at Pressbooks, which is really awesome for us. Um, and our marketing director, Lee, they're building a collection. You would be able to click this cover and it would apply the diversity, equity, inclusion collection, for example. And you would see a bunch of books which have been tagged with that particular collection name in that collection. So there, there are going to be a series of featured collections, and then we're building out more collections over time, which will help you find books on a given topic or a given subject of interest. 
we would love to know about the kinds of collections that you would like to see that you think would be more useful for you and your users. So please tell us the collections that you wish existed. And we that's something we're really looking forward to building out based on user feedback in the coming months. Uh, other things that you'll notice is that the find a book feature is pretty clean here. Let's say I want to look for education. You'll see it brings you down. There's 645 results. You can jump to page five of those results, page eight. You can use those pagination tools. You can scroll down and see a bunch of them. And then there's also pagination here at the bottom. You'll scroll you back to the top when you change pagination. Um, you can see that the books per page, I could see 10 per page, which makes them smaller. Or I could see 50 per page, which makes it bigger. And then I can change my sort order. Right now, it displays with the most recently updated. But you could sort them in alphabetical order if you preferred. Um, and then the filters are the part that I really get excited about. So let me clear the search out and show you. Um, one of the filters that we're building would be recommended books. So we're working through these books. We told everybody that if you submit a book that has really well-formed metadata and looks complete, we're going to start to add it to that recommended list. There's instructions for that in our guide, but please do encourage your authors to add the metadata that the directory needs to display it well. And then you'll start to see that books will begin to be recommended and they'll have a little recommended tag. This is just a way of indicating that the book looks complete and has good metadata primarily. You'll also be able to sort by license. So you could say, I don't want any, you can exclude a term or include. So let's say I don't want any of the all rights reserved books to show up. I only want stuff that has an open license. And then you'll see that there's a subject filter. I can search within this. So if I wanted to look for I don't know, social, social. <laughs> I can see sociology, social work, social attitude, social theory. And then I might want to also look for education books. So I'll start, oh, here we go. There's a bunch of education things. So I've applied a bunch of different subject filters at the same time. And then you could come down and say, I want to see books that are in, I don't know, BC campus and Oregon. And Washington. So I, that's Cascadia for me. So let's look here. So I've just filtered by those networks. And then I might want to say, I, I don't want anything that's student authored for whatever reason. Uh, you can also use this date picker to say, I only want to see books that have been updated since January 1st of this year. And I want them in English. And I could search by publisher if I wanted to. Okay, I want word count. I want them to have at least 10,000 words. And they must have at least five H5 or four H5P activities. All right, let's say one H5P activity. And I have found the perfect search that ended up bringing me back one result. That's kind of wild that I was able to do that. So um, you, you'll see here that this is a particular search with a ton of filters applied. If I wanted to share this query with someone, I could just take this URL and I could send it to somebody else. If they open this query, it would have the exact filters applied with whatever live updates or changes have been in place. I could also say, let's get rid of that word count requirement. And now there's two results. Let's get rid of the student authored requirement. Let's get rid of the last updated. Let's get rid of the not all rights reserved and H5P activities. And here I'm now at 21. So uh, this is something that you can do right now in the Pressbooks directory. And we are really excited to be bringing you this newer, beautiful directory, as well as some future upcoming changes that are in the works. I'm going to pause my screen share there and take questions from people about the directory. Aperva mentioned that she would love to see a collection of OER for the trades. That is a collection that we are working on actively, Aperva. So I think that's going to be one of our first ones that's built. And it would be kind of cool to do a discipline subject area featured every month. I'll suggest that to Lee. I like that idea a lot. Um, Rama asked, will we be getting similar filter catalog fields at the network catalog level in a future update? Um, Rama, we don't have uh, that nailed down quite yet. But on our near-term roadmap this year, I would like to update the Aldean catalog especially, which would be your network catalog. And I think many of these kinds of things that we're doing here in directory, it would be really nice to give those to you at the network level. So this would be kind of the inspiration for what we do at the network level. Um, and I, I want to talk with the really big consortia like you and BC Campus and others 
to make sure that what we're doing at the network level makes sense for how you're using the catalog. So expect to hear from me after we wrap up this directory project. Okay, so Aperva asked, are there any other filters on the roadmap so far? For example, for accessibility, whether a resource has been adopted, et cetera. These are great questions, Aperva. So uh, I think maybe the inspiration for that question might have been the BC Campus Catalog. So I'll show you that one and um, I can talk about some of the differences. So here at BC Campus, you'll see that they have a couple of these tags, which would say adopted, supplementary materials, uh, reviewed. They're adding this extra catalog metadata. The problem that we have right now is almost everything we're displaying in the directory has to come from the Pressbooks API, which means it has to be input by users at the source and, and or added by us afterwards as an act of cataloging. And the trick that we're, I guess the problem that we're running into is unless we add those features for the network managers or others to add to their books themselves, that means that we would have to act as the cataloger. Um, and in, in many cases, we just don't know enough about these networks and their books to be able to do that. So some of those things would be really nice, but we don't have immediate plans to do it. If we can add it to the book info page and let people enter it in a uniform way, that would be easiest. Otherwise, um, I think we're gonna, we, we've just hired a, the Pressbooks like resident, librarian in residence. So these are the kinds of things that we'll be discussing with, with uh, Travis in that position. And I think that's the, uh, the idea is those kinds of things may be coming, but there are some kind of technical blockers to it right now that we still need to figure out. I wanna open this up. I will pause this, the recording. Um, and this is your time to ask the product manager or ask the development team anything you want to know. Uh, whether it's about future features that are important to you, about why something does or doesn't work the way you want. We'll take about maybe five minutes for that, and then we'll open it up for the community roundtable. Thanks again, everybody, for sharing your notes. We've added them to the community roundtable in the document. If you wanted to see what was discussed outside of the recording, feel free to go there and see some of the exciting work that people have been sharing. We appreciate all that you do for open education, and we'll see you again at next month's product update. Talk to you then.